years ago. And what I, what I did when I started studying is that I, I would take certain scriptures that could stand on their own. In other words, I mean, all of them work together, but there are some that just encapsulate truth, and you can say that, and you know that that applies. Okay? And so I, what I tried to look for was the, the big picture. In other words, I didn't want to have to know and didn't think I had to know every scripture for everything. See, if somebody has a blood disease, something wrong with the blood, then I, I, I could do it like other people did because I've seen it done. And there's even times whenever I'll do a certain thing and I, you know, somebody will come to me for something and I'll say, okay, in the name of Jesus, right now, blood be purified, skin be cleansed. A lot of times if there's a, a situation in the skin, it's because it's in the blood. And it comes out through the skin. So if there's blemishes or things on the skin, many times it's because of impurities in the blood. And so whenever I, when I know that, then automatically uh, I will go after pure, you know, to purify the blood. And I'll, I'll just say it in the name of Jesus, blood be purified. Knowing that when the blood is purified, the skin will, will clean up automatically. And so, but I, I, so I look, I didn't go in. Now there are scriptures. And I've heard people talk about it, and you know, I've actually used them in times past, and they work, where you can call out about the blood. You know, I passed by, they saw thee in thy blood, and I said, be healed, be cleansed, and they did. And so we've seen that. We've seen scripture. You can take these individual scriptures and apply them to a, a, a modern situation, and it will work, mainly because the scripture is true, but also mainly because your faith in God, that he will keep his word, so it works. But the thing with that is, there's a lot of problems you can come across. And if you're going to try to hit every problem with an individual scripture, then you're going to have to know a lot of scripture, and hopefully you learn them all before that problem shows up. All right? So what I did, you know, going back to kind of my old martial art mentality at that time, was I was looking for the one technique that would beat many things. Right? I didn't want to have, have to have a different technique for each attack. I was looking for one technique that could handle everything or at least most things. And I found that, first off, in the name of Jesus. Okay? The name of Jesus beats everything. Right? And we use that. Now, it's not a talisman or a charm or you know, an incantation. That guy doesn't work that way. It works because you believe it. And whenever you, you know, I'll just throw this in here. When you speak in the name of Jesus, in other words, when you're standing in as his representative, which is what that means, when you do something in his name, and you believe that what he has said, and therefore you're stepping out and doing it, then usually, usually, now listen carefully, you listen, listen to the words, okay? Be, be nitpicky about this. Usually, you wouldn't have to use the name of Jesus. You understand that? When you're doing it in his name, you don't have to say the name. Now, should you say the name? Sure. You should, you could, you can, you should. You know, it's like, yeah, of course, why? Because you want people to know who you're connected with and who's actually doing that. But you're in his stead. See, so whatever you do, it says whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord and do it in the name of Jesus. So everything you do for him, you're doing in his name. So you don't have to use that name. Now, so the name is not magic. It doesn't just, you know, you don't just throw the name out there and it works just because of the name itself. So you have to recognize the authority behind that name. Now, I'm not saying don't use the name. When we minister to the sick, especially on the streets and things like that, of course. Why? Because you want people to know who it is you're connected to and who's actually doing it. So it's always good to do it. Always good to use the name out there. But you, you don't have to do that to make it happen because you're doing it in his name. See, he's given you power of attorney. So now you're doing it, that thing in his name. It will work even if you don't mention the name. Why? Because in you, you're, you know why you're doing it and how you get to do it. And you know that's because of him. Does that make sense to you? Now, you understand, I, I'm not in any way demeaning the name, right? But notice when what, I, what I said was this. You don't have to use the name. You can. Should, can, all, you know, all the time. But if you don't, it will still work if you're doing it in his stead because that's what in his name means. You're doing this in my stead. Go and do. If, if I was there, what would I do if a person had a demon? Uh, I'd cast him out. So you go in my name, which means what? You see a person with a demon, cast it out. 
Do what I would do if you were there, if, if I were there. Does that make sense? Now, everybody, everybody heard what I said, right? Yeah. I did not tell you not to use the name, okay? <clears throat> but if in the process of ministering to a person and you don't use the name, and when you leave, you go, oh, I never used the name of Jesus. Don't chase them down, <laughs> okay? It'll still work. So just, I'm just saying you don't have to because what you're doing is in his name. Now, 